Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Canola Producers Commission, SAS Canola, and Manitoba Canola Girl. Uh, the name's Tom Wolf. Uh, we're with Agrimetrics, and we run the website Spurs 101 with Jason DeVoe in Ontario. Okay, awesome. So can you tell me a little bit about what you're doing with Spurs Tank Clean out here? Yeah, I think uh, anybody that grows canola knows that you can damage your canola crop quite easily with some residues of potentially uh, damaging group twos. Usually it's group twos. And we want to just remind people of the various approaches they can use to decontaminate their sprayer. There's usually two parts to a clean out. Uh, the first one is to effectively dilute the remaining volume in your tank. And the second part is to decontaminate all the other parts of the sprayer. So we can just start with the tank. Really important prerequisite to a clean out is that you minimize the remaining volume in the tank. It just makes the cleaning it that much easier. That means your last tank accurately measure it. Take extra diligence to make sure you run out when you're done your field. When you are done your field and you usually have something left, please spray it out on the field. It's legal to spray out twice the rate. You can go over a previously sprayed area twice. Uh, crop tolerance is okay. Um, so that's the best thing to do. Once your pump is at zero, you're, in other words, your pump is sucking air, you've got almost nothing left. But you do have what we call a remaining volume, and that is possibly something in the sump, certainly the suction line to the pump, and then the return lines that feed the agitation in the sparge, bypass, whatever. So that can be five gallons, 10 gallons, depends on the sprayer, usually it's two inch plumbing. You know, it can be quite a lot actually. It surprises how much it can be. That stuff will not, cannot be pushed out the boom. It has to be diluted. So three ways of doing that. First way is to just fill the tank with water and then spray that out or dump it in some cases. We don't recommend, as I said, dumping, but a lot of volume is also really impractical. A much better way, this is the second way, is to do what we call just a triple rinse. Take your existing volume of water and subdivide it into smaller bits, and then just do those bits sequentially. Let's say you have a 150 gallon clean water tank. If you were to have a 10 gallon remainder in the tank and then just use the full 150, you would dilute that by a factor of 16. If you did three batches of 50 on that same 150, you would dilute that 10 gallon remainder by a factor of 216. You get way more bang for the buck. You can do five rinses if you want, depending on how, what your needs are. That's step one. Um, step two is uh, to then effectively uh, decontaminate the remainder of your boom. So we've got a couple of problems. We've got the lines, we've got the screens, and we've got the boom. On the boom ends, uh, usually there's a dead space and most guys will have a ball valve on that to drain that boom end and purge the air and those kinds of things. Time consuming, messy because you put it on the ground, sometimes it sprays your boom. A much better way is to have an express nozzle body end cap. We've talked about this one before, but basically this truncates your boom so you have no end uh, remaining. It also purges all the air out on the go. It's very nice. And a third option, one that's coming new on some European models, is a recirculating boom. In other words, you feed the boom on one line, on one end, it sprays all the nozzles, and then the remainder doesn't end, it comes back into the boom, into the tank. So uh, easier to prime your boom, easier to clean your boom, no air in the boom. Very nice. So can you touch on the importance of cleaning out your tank when you're done, you know, not letting it sit overnight? Or how does that affect Yeah, very good question because a lot of the problems are best uh, prevented rather than solved, right? So most of the products that are problematic might not be very soluble, so they can settle out. They might be suspensions, for example. If you clean them out right away, you've minimized your problem. But if you let them settle out, then you've got a deposit that might be caked on and it's much, much harder to do and you can't see it. I mean, you can't see inside these booms or lines, right? So then you, what you really have to do is be extra diligent and do it an extra time. It's, it's a time waster to do it that way. And uh, how long does it take often for these to settle into the square? It can happen quick. Uh, if we have a suspension and we stop agitating it, it can happen in minutes, actually. It's, it's remarkably quick. 
We tend not to spray those kinds of formulations though, so you do have some time, but I would say certainly don't uh, go into the night uh, without at least rinsing your boom with water. So that's a challenge too, because most uh, plumbing systems aren't easily set up for doing that, right? So you might want to investigate, can I pump just water into the boom and have my tank full of chemicals still if I'm going to spray tomorrow again? If you can't, probably a couple of modifications can make that possible. What do you think is the biggest thing that producers don't know when it comes to spray tank cleanups? Well, the problem is always that you never know when you're done, yeah. right? Because dirty or contaminated water looks exactly the same as clean water. So you've got clean water, it's not foaming anymore. Is it clean? Does it have a small amount of residue that can harm canola? The answer is you don't know. When do you know? In about two weeks, right? So we're just basically spraying uh, the spray tank uh, into the boom. Uh, on all conventional plumbed sprayers, there's uh, an end uh, beyond the last nozzle, which uh, contains air and potentially residue from what you've been spraying. And that, that residue doesn't really come out very easily. So what most guys will do is they will uh, put a, a ball valve on that and manually drain it out. A slightly better way to do it is to actually install an express end cap and I'm just going to root the boom over here now. You're hearing hissing and that's actually air getting bled out of the spray boom, okay? And so as we introduce more air, you see a little bit here a little bit more hissing. So now there's no more air in this boom and there's also no contamination at the very end. So that's a, a very cool thing. A third way that you can do this is to have what's called a recirculating boom and that means we'll go back to this boom and we'll now instead of having a dead end, we'll actually take that liquid and just bring it back to the tank. So there's no, no dead space and everything's good to go, okay? The tank is basically empty so now what we're going to do is we're going to turn on this pump and it will wash down the walls and then the main solution pump will get primed again and it'll continue to spray out. The system is designed so that the washdown volume is about the same as the, the overall spray volume so that the tank never fills up again. So the, the pump is always slightly starved. That's the best way to rapidly dilute the remainder. It's basically a, just a continuous rinse. It's a continuous dilution of, of the small amount that's remaining. The return line the, uh, and the agitation lines are on during this whole process, so you're, you're really effective. Once your clean water tank is, uh, is empty, you just simply spray out the remainder and the boom contents are pretty well water. And then you still have to go ahead and decontaminate the various components. We usually direct guys, uh, you know, I, I mean, you can read up about it on Spares 101. We've written a few things up about how to do this. And, um, you know, it's uh, early days for us on, on the uh, continuous clean out, for example. We're still trying to source pumps that, are, that match the volume. For example, you want your wash down volume to be just a little bit less than your spray volume. About 30 gallons per minute is a spray volume of an average high clearance sprayer at 10 gallons. And you don't want to do, you don't want to put more than 30 gallons in because it accumulates in the tank. You want to have just a little bit less in. So those volume ma matches are a bit of a challenge. Um, but yeah, Spurs 101 has uh, some of that information on it right now. <laughs>